my uh, colleague Mark Davis, who's been our Trump uh, campaign correspondent over the uh, past few days. Uh, Mark Davis, can you hear me? I can, James, yes. Yeah, Mark, uh, so what's your take? What, what, how, how did Donald Trump manage to pull this off? Well, he's pulled it off uh, despite having all the, out the odds stacked against him. Uh, he had a, an electoral map that was hugely in, in Clinton's favor. Uh, he was faced with a shrinking Republican demographic. He had far, far fewer campaign funds to spend. Um, he was up against the, the exciting prospect of America's first female president. Uh, he was up against somebody who, who had some big hitters in her corner, including two two-term presidents. Uh, he also managed to do this despite breaking many of the perceived golden rules of politics. Um, avoid sex scandals. Uh, don't say that not paying income tax is a smart thing uh, to do. Don't offend half of your electorate and an entire neighboring country. Uh, stick to the facts. So despite all of these things, he's managed to win, and he's managed to win decisively. But I wonder to what point it's despite these things, and to what point it's it's in part thanks to these things that he's won. The fact that he, the odds were against him made him the outsider. It made him the, the, the David to Goliath or, or the, the Rocky to Apollo Creed. Uh, the fact that he's, he's broken all these rules of politics, it was for many people a breath of fresh air. They're, 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 they're sick of the, the ruling elite, the Washington establishment. And um, so it's it, perhaps in part due to what he was up against um, that helped him to win. And I think another thing was his strategy. His strategy, his strategy was simple and it was effective. And it turned out to be smart. His strategy was based around uh, you start by attacking your opponent's character and then you attack your opponent's character some more. And when you're finished doing that, you attack your opponent's character. Well, Mike, you make an interesting point there about uh, the rebellion against the elite. I mean, you just had to look at the, uh, the final day of campaigning. Hillary Clinton was spending her time with uh, celebrity multimillionaires, and Donald Trump was holding a rally with uh, blue-collar workers in, in, in Michigan. I'm just wondering, though, he struck a very conciliatory tone uh, in his uh, speech a few hours ago. How seriously should we take that? Well, the, the, the change in rhetoric was, was, was immediate. Um, he spent the whole campaign uh, lambasting Clinton, questioning her integrity. He created a character, almost crooked Hillary Clinton. And immediately after, she called him to congratulate him. And while his supporters were still outside the Hilton Hotel uh, chanting, uh, lock her up, he came out and he said that all Americans owe her a great debt uh, of gratitude for her service. Uh, it, was like, it was like listening to, to, to two different people, in fact. The, the, the campaign Trump is a thing of the past. Campaign Trump has served his purpose. He's got Donald Trump into the White House. So now we'll be looking to, to President-elect Trump uh, for clues as to what we could expect from, um, from, from President Trump. Now, it's not going to be easy to, uh, to, to unite the American people, especially after you've offended so many of them. And I think many of the people who he's offended and the people who, who despise Donald Trump, they will be looking for a sign soon that these words, these, these conciliatory words, translate into, into gestures and into action. Well, Mark, we'll uh, have to leave it there. I'm afraid we're out of time, and we'll also have to see what Ezra follows.